Welcome to Midweek Experiments in Faithfulness. This is a weekly facilitated spiritual practice with a Quaker flavor and an experimental ethos. My name is Jen Higgins Newman, and I'm the program manager at Beacon Hill Friends House. We're a Quaker center for learning and action and a residential community of about 20 people who live according to Quaker values. Tonight, we have Sadell Wilshire with Labyrinth Walks in Pen and Ink, a guided interactive art meditation. Walking a labyrinth as a form of prayer or meditation is an ancient spiritual practice. Unlike a maze, labyrinths aren't a way to get lost, but a guided path inward, physically and spiritually, at least in non-pandemic times physically, and back out into the world. However, you don't have to walk a physical labyrinth in order to bring this practice into your life. In this program, Sadell will offer us a guided labyrinth drawing meditation using pencil, pen, and paper. Now, I'm excited to introduce you to Sadell. Sadell Wiltshire creates and teaches art as a spiritual practice. A labyrinth facilitator and contemplative artist, she leads workshops for diverse groups, including friends in the US and UK. She is presenting at the upcoming 2020 Labyrinth Society Gathering in September. I guess that already happened in September because it's the last day of September now. Um, Sadell is a member of Putney Friends Meeting in Vermont. So again, welcome. We're happy that you've joined us and Sadell, it's all yours. Welcome everyone. I am a member of Putney Friends Meeting um, here in Putney, Vermont. I'm also a labyrinth facilitator. So labyrinths and why I love them so much. I uh, discovered labyrinths probably over 20 years ago, but it wasn't really until another time when I was with friends and uh, we were walking this beautiful labyrinth in New, Ham in New Hampshire, we came across a beautiful labyrinth in New Hampshire. And I suddenly made this connection to uh, how a labyrinth can be, it's, it's, it's a wonderful walking meditation. If there are folks here who've never walked one, it's a place you can bring your problems to. It's a place that you can bring your prayers to. I have found it as a Quaker, it sometimes helps me center down and get to that centered place before worship that I often, um, I'm, I can be a nervous person sometimes or I don't sit well for a really long time. And, and sometimes I just have a really hard time in sitting meditation, getting myself into that centered place. And the labyrinth takes me there walking. So it was about, oh, I want to say about six years ago or so, I became also fascinated with the form of the labyrinth. And um, as someone who loves to draw and illustrate and journal with art, I I became fascinated about ways to bring that into that practice as well. And so some of you may be familiar with that, you know, you can walk a labyrinth. You can also walk a labyrinth with your fingers. So there are things called finger labyrinths that you can trace with your fingers. I want to introduce this idea that uh, sometimes some, this is not, there's no right way or wrong way to walk a labyrinth. Many people will come to a labyrinth and bring something that's on their minds or bring, like I said, a prayer or bring some people, they just bring a, an intention, something that they want to leave in the labyrinth or bring into the labyrinth and let go. So there's different stages. And again, this is just one way to consider walking a labyrinth. Mostly the idea is that you come in and you might have this thing on your mind or you bring this prayer in and then you begin to walk and how fast or slow you do it is up to you. But the walk in and the walk out in a way can be a release. You're letting go of everything else that's on your mind. So you were thinking about all the chores you had to do today, where you had to drive the kids today. It's not tax season, but if it were doing your taxes, you let all that stuff go. So as friends, we have this practice of sitting and centering down. And this is yet another form of centering down. You can think of it like that. A labyrinth is not a maze. As Jen mentioned, you can't get lost.
And when you get to the center, when I get to the center of a labyrinth that I'm actually walking, I will often pause. Some people will pause and stay there for quite some time. Some people, there's a variety of things you can do in the center. But this is the part that they call the receiving. I find that when I walk a labyrinth and I've let go and I'm peeling back that onion and I'm getting into that centered space that by the time I get to the center, I am centered and I feel calmer. And sometimes things come to me while I'm walking and sometimes they don't and that's okay too. And when you're ready, you walk back out the same way that you came. Some people in the labyrinth world call that the return. You could consider it something, what are you, you know, if you received something, it might, you might think about what did you receive that you can bring back out into the world. And I'm going to lead you in this idea of this, in this meditation, I feel that especially during this time of um, division in our country, that the idea of spreading and sowing seeds for peace just came to me. And I wanted to put out the idea that you might look at the labyrinth with your pen and consider we're going to do a couple of walks, but we're going to come in and put place a seed. Just draw a seed, however you would draw a seed. Somewhere along the path. This might be a seed, seeds that you might want to spread in your own neighborhood. in your community, in your family, or for the country. And imagine that you're walking the labyrinth and you are just placing a seed here and there, seeds of peace that will hopefully grow will be dormant in the winter and hopefully grow into some hope. As you get into the center, you might want to put a couple more seeds together. Imagine what those seeds might represent and how you might wish them to grow. And then when you're ready, we're going to walk back out with our pen, but we're going to walk back out connecting these seeds. With a line with a wavy line. So connecting the first seeds in the center to the first, to the next seed that it finds. And then take a wavy line up and down until it connects to the next seed. If you feel moved to name what comes up for you or a word as you reach each seed, I invite you to do that. You can, you can jot things down on the outside of your labyrinth or save them in your head and see what you remember. 
to right afterwards. Connecting each seed on your walk with the next one. Noticing how you're moved. Spreading seeds of love and hope for your neighbors, for those who have been divided, for those who are in pain or suffering. Seeds connected with waves of love until you reach the exit of your labyrinth and perhaps we'll plant another seed right there. At this time, I invite you to walk back into the labyrinth. If, you, if, if there were some words that came to you, that you'd like to write them down, you can write them in the center when you get back to the center, or you can write them along the outside. This was a concept that I've been keeping with me quite a bit this weekend. Tony Christie spoke of it at the Labyrinth Society gathering of love over fear. And I like to think of it as love eclipses fear and how we can spread that love. What can we do in our own communities? There are many, many ways that you can walk back into the labyrinth, especially if you're working with a labyrinth this big, there's lots more room. If you'd like to draw, you can take out a coloring, something to color with, make some more strokes with my pen and just follow the line again. Oftentimes I may just do one labyrinth walk, but tonight it's a form of worship. It's a form of prayer. It's a form of respite, of finding some peace. So you can do it as many times as you'd like. There's no perfect way to draw. This is, I should have mentioned at the beginning, this is not about drawing the perfect line, making the perfect line. It's about moving with your pen and walking with your pen. and back into the center. We'll take one more little walk out. And here, we invite you to wander with your pen or if you're coloring, you can add any other stroke with your pen. But I like to keep it moving. So I'm adding some pearls, keeping my pen going.
as if it was a f each flow of the pen is like not quite like footsteps but almost like skating and if i slip that's okay because we have slips in life to so recognize it and move on imagining what we might take out from our walk today how can we make a change or be a change in our world to provide comfort somewhere or hospitality or love or witness And when you finish this, the beautiful thing about it is that you won't be necessarily done with it. This could be a memento to remind you. It might be that you'll walk this again, perhaps with color or just with your fingers or walk it with your eyes in silence. I like to think of the labyrinth as a gift that keeps giving and come back to it and replenish. Just like sitting and meeting for worship. Or any other practice that you use to find peace and comfort. I could spend another two hours coming back in and adding more pen marks, but doing it as, as a walk. But I believe I'm going to stop here and invite you to just take a few minutes and jot down anything else that might have occurred to you or might have, how you might have been sparked. What did you take in? To your labyrinth. Feel free to jot it down. Is there any message that came to you? Just hold on to that. Is there a way that you've been led to make a change? Perhaps be a change? <clears throat> 